Hello everyone and welcome back to the Retro Recall. I hope you're doing awesome, as always. Here we are on the bench today. We have three more custom PCs that I have no idea if they work. When are they from? I don't know either. This is exactly what it was like back in the 90s and 2000s, like the late 90s and early 2000s. We had the wild west of computing. I say that all the time on this channel about these different types of systems. These three systems look like they are custom builds. The nice thing about custom builds that I find whenever I go to e-waste is that you never know what you're going to get in every one of them. I mean, between optical drives, hard disk drives, look at the random beige floppy disks in these in these black systems. And, you know, we're missing stuff. And I love that. I love that about these because they're each a mystery. So in these series of videos that I do, I like to get these systems from eWaste and find out if I'm able to get either one of them or all of them working. I like to discover what's inside of them, see if they post. And, you know, I have Nopix, so I throw that in there if it has an optical drive and see if it will actually boot to an operating system if it doesn't have a hard disk. So as always, we have lots to do. Let's get right to it. And here we are with system number one. And as you know, as I stated earlier in the intro, in these types of videos, I like to find out how many of these systems we can get posting. So we'll keep track of that as we go. So the first system looks like a Cooler Master Custom PC. And I say custom because there's no real badging or real kind of case OEM type indication that this was any sort of OEM. And of course, Cooler Master itself is not an OEM brand. So Cooler Master made very nice systems. I've done a couple videos on some of the Cooler Master stuff. And so if you haven't seen that, that was during the server video I did, which is right there. That whole series was really fun to, to do. So those cases were just absolutely built well. I don't get the same feeling of this case when I touch it and lift it. It's very light. It does have the same sort of kind of grills in the front here that allow some additional ventilation, which is nice. We have our LG optical drive. It looks like just a beige standard 1.44 megabyte floppy drive here. Nothing fancy. But this is something that you saw more and more on case designs in the early 2000s. The front I.O., the USB, two audio ports here. We have one for our microphone and one for a headset. And then we have what looks like a 1394 cutout or breakout, I should say. But there's nothing here. Like it's just a, a plug that you would punch out and put an actual connection in. So unfortunately, this case does not come with that. And of course, we have continued kind of like that design for ventilation continuing down the front. But the unfortunate thing about this ventilation is that it gets very dirty very easily if it's kept in a room that has a lot of dust. And then down below here, we have what looks like light, L-I-T-E. So I don't know if that's elite or like that's supposed to be an E and then light. I'm not sure in terms of the power button we have here. So just pretty standard power button in the front here. I really like that kind of feel of the power button. It looks like there's a rubberized dome around the power button itself. So it kind of floats in there. It's kind of cool. Then we have what looks like a hard disk LED. Then we have a reset button on the front and additional ventilation by the looks of things. Let's continue along the side here. And then overall, generally this case is in really good condition. I mean, little scuffs and marks here and there, but nothing too bad. Let's look around the back. All right, so already right away, I noticed there's a big gaping hole. So we have don't have any power supply here in the computer. So we'll have to make sure in order for the test this, we'll have to get a temporary power supply, which I have. And here we have our motherboard IO on the back here. We have two PS2, a serial port, a built on VGA or built in, depending on how you want to say that. And we have four USB ports here. So we have four plus a two on the front, giving us our six built on ethernet and our audio as well. So that's all on the motherboard IO itself. Then down here, it looks like we have a video card, but uh, I don't know what we have for a video card yet till we open up the case, but we do have VGA, HDMI and DVI, which is very well rounded. And it looks like there is a fan populated here as well. I see the four screws and a little bit of dirt gave that away. 
And then on the other side, okay, Cooler Master fashion, we have some additional cooling available to us. Kind of like this honeycomb type design that uh, gives us additional ventilation through the side panel. All right, we're gonna take the side panel off, speaking of that, and look at the underside of it here just a moment. Yeah, that's what I was referring to. So we have this kind of like, this. the intention of this is to go right to the CPU. You would just kind of adjust this in and out based on where your CPU was, giving it depth, so that the fan is blowing the hot air off of the heatsink directly out of the computer. So that's uh, really handy to have for sure. All right, let's look at the inside of this computer in a much better view. Okay, and here we are in the inside of the case, and it's very basic for what I'm seeing here, but uh, yeah, we'll just go through it. So we have where our power supply would be, obviously missing from here, but uh, pretty standard here. And I like to go over these because you never know the condition of these cases as you're getting these from e-waste or you're getting donated them. It's just nice to see, and I do this, and people have asked me on the channel, why do you go through all of this with this, these junk computers and things like that? Well, I made the determination whether or not we're gonna save specific parts for you know future builds, or maybe this would be a custom build, or it's a really nice motherboard, or maybe we'll do a recap and things like that. You never know. Or maybe this in itself would be a worthy candidate for a complete restoration. So those are the things that I kind of look for when I do these things. So again, in the back, there's our fan that we were talking about that I saw, kind of saw populated there, which was really nice. We have an optical drive, but it is SATA, but unfortunately it does not look like we have any SATA cables connecting that for, well, obviously power because the power supply is missing, nor data. So I, I do have a couple of those, so we will test that out for sure. We'll have to hook it up just because we wanna make sure that we can at least to see if the system will post and boot into possibly Nopix. And then here we do have a Intel heatsink and fan assembly, probably a Pentium 4 or an Intel Celeron core type of uh, setup here. So I'm not exactly sure. We'll know that as we go in further. And for the motherboard, we have an MSI MS7529 version 1.6 motherboard. So nice to see MSI. I like MSI boards. I know some people have different mixed opinions about them, but I, I've never had uh, any real issues with them, which is nice. So for the memory, yes, I'm digging in. I'm going to take the memory out. So for the memory, we have what looks like one gigabyte of Kingston memory. And my guess would be is we have two of those and my guess is wrong. That's a two gigabyte stick. So we have two sticks of memory here, totaling three gigabytes of RAM, which is nice to have in any day, especially that low profile RAM. I really like it, especially in uh, these sort of designs. It gets it you know, tight quarters, or if you have kind of any sort of boards with RAM slots running under some of the longer cards, it's nice to have the lower profile for sure. Okay, then we have our chipset here, which is pretty straightforward. Looks like we have a coin cell battery populated. There's our four pin power header here as well. So to me, that tells me it's more of the Pentium 4 era, but we'll see as we go. And in terms of ports here, so we have, uh, you know, I'm looking at the motherboard itself here and I'm seeing an IDE port here, which is nice. So this is one of those boards that were in between in that transitionary period. So we have the IDE port here as well as four SATA connectors here. So that gave you lots of options for expansion within this uh, kind of like this era. And then of course we'd have down here a floppy uh, drive cable here, ribbon cable. So we don't have that connected. I'm just gonna pull that out because we really don't need that to do any sort of testing because we have that beige floppy drive that's in here, but we're not gonna be using that right now. So then we have additional kind of front IO headers to the motherboard or cabling to the motherboard here. Pretty straightforward. Okay, so in terms of a video card, I like this I like this little kind of design here. You just kind of flip that up and then it gives you access without having to take a bunch of screws off and things like that. So I'm just gonna see if we're hooked in here by, yeah, we are. Let's make sure we get that out, there we are. So it looks like for a video card, we have a low profile video card in here, a PCIe 16 lane card. And what do we have for I'm gonna go over here for a second, just dust it off because I don't want all that dirt falling back on the motherboard. Okay, it looks like we have an HD 5550 PCIe HDMI DVI and VGA. 
one gigabyte DDR3 VRAM video card. That's not too bad. So having an ATI Sapphire card here. So we'll uh, we'll definitely try this out and see what we have in terms of making sure it even works, you know, in terms of functioning. But I mean, that's a pretty well-rounded card for what it would have been back in the day. But again, there's always more expansion. So when I say comments like that, that it would have been a decent card. Well, it would have been. And, you know, a lot of people say, well, there's better cards. Well, there are. <laughs> I mean, that's the purpose of that. That was the Wild West that I keep on referring to. Because no matter, even if I bought this, I this was brand new on the shelf. I bought this. I popped this in the card. Or I popped this in the computer. It would be another card out there that would be even better and, and within a week or two. And, and so it's just was so exciting back then as to all the different configurations. And so what would happen, it would force people to try to max out the hardware they had with the with the software they had and the games they had and different things like that. So I that's why I called the Wild West. I thought it was absolutely exciting to be part of. Okay, I'm gonna pop that back in because I mean, there's not much more to see on this motherboard outside of the two PCI slots here as well, giving us some expansion. This is a much smaller motherboard, obviously in a larger case, obviously it's nice to have this uh, type of case as well though, in, in, you know, if this is in decent shape because it does give us some expansion possibilities for future builds. Okay, so I think that's pretty much it. I mean, the nice thing about having something simplistic like this, there's nothing more to show. I mean, it's pretty compact motherboard for what it is. So let's get this all kind of sorted out. Let's get the bench set up and see if we can get this system posting. Okay, and we're back and on the bench with everything kind of set up here. So there's our custom case that we have, our system number one, HD monitor, keyboard and mouse. And of course we have an external power supply, ATX power supply that I have plugged in to the system. I've also plugged in the optical drive uh, with a SATA cable as well as the SATA power just to test it out. And my goodness, I love the look of this when it's all together. Just, I mean, just everything kind of matches, but on top of that, just this screams customization for me. You know, I'm just remembering back in the day when I would see a case like this, I'd think how many more of these optical bays can I, expansion bays can I populate? What can I switch out in terms of a floppy drive? What can I do in terms of internal video cards and, and hard disks and you name it. So definitely love seeing this sort of things on the channel. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and hit the power button here. So I'm just hitting the power switch on the ATX power supply. I love power supplies that have that switch. <laughs> it kind of gives me an extra step uh, to kind of safety step here. And I'm gonna hit the power button and see what happens. Do we have post? We have post, green light on the monitor. I get two post beeps and nothing. Interesting. Okay, let's do a reset on this and see what happens. As yeah, so there's something displaying on the screen because it is, it, it, it kind of lights up, the backlight lights up a bit. There's a post beep. It kind of like goes dim, then black, then dim. You can't, I don't know how much of that you can see on this, oh, there we are. Look at that. <laughs> Reboot and select proper boot device or insert boot media in selected boot device and press a key. So that's great news. We have post everybody. <laughs> Sorry, I got sidetracked with that. It's interesting. It's like the it wouldn't display for some reason. So I'm not, I don't know what was going on there, but there was definitely an image on here. Let's just turn the power off again. I'm gonna do a cold, a cold boot to see if we can replicate that same symptom or not because it may indicate there's an issue with the video card, possibly. Uh, I know that this system also has built on video as well if we need it. So let's turn the power back on and see what happens. Okay, one post beep. Yeah, see there's nothing on the screen. And it goes dark and then kind of comes back a bit. And I see a cursor this time. All right, so it is, it is working. And I'm using the uh, the Sapphire card that's in there. Let's do a control delete and we'll tap the delete key to see if we can get into any sort of BIOS setup. Okay, there we go. Look at that. That's interesting. It's not showing us any splash screen or anything. So I don't know if there's a, it might even be my monitor and I am plugged into the VGA port on the, uh, uh, on the dedicated graphics. So I'm not sure if that's causing any sort of difficulty versus I should be using the HDMI maybe or the DVI, 
But uh, anyway, we have post, everybody. That's what it, that's the master uh, plan here. Okay, let's go through this a little bit and uh, see. I, I just love the look of this of this BIOS. It's one of the more modern American megatrends in terms of the kind of the older style systems. Let's go under standard steam off. So it is keeping the date and time there, no problem. So the coin cell is fine. It did detect on SATA 1 the DVD RAM or multi drive that we have in there. So that's really good. Floppy drive A, it's not connected, but I mean, it's just hard coded in there. Let's go under system information, see what we have. There we are, there's our CPU. So we have an Intel Core 2 Duo CPU E7500 running at 2.93 gigahertz, it's pretty awesome. And CPU frequency tells you what the clock multiplier is and everything, and then the BIOS version, which is awesome, and then our memory. So sure enough, there's our three gigabytes of RAM. Great to see all that kind of put together. And of course, we have a whole bunch of BIOS options here that we can go through and tweak. And the more options you have in the BIOS, the more kind of tweaking you can do to get more performance out of it, as well as compatibility. I'm just going through here just to see if everything's kind of working. I love the hardware monitors that are built on. Just kind of gives you kind of an idea what's uh, what's going on in terms of all the different voltages. This is a brand new power supply, so I'm not worried about any of that stuff. Um, but yeah, it's uh, looking pretty darn good. Uh, stay away from that BIOS password for sure. Uh, let's see here, BIOS update. So you can do the flash rate on here, I guess. Um, yeah, back up the BIOS, the USB drive. You can actually pop it in and do a backup as well as do an update, I guess, directly from here. I'm not going to do that right now. <laughs> Obviously, I don't have anything, but uh, interesting, you can do it right from here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go grab the Nopix CD and see if we can boot into Nopix. Okay, we're going to save. I, I don't think I changed anything, but... That's fine. Let's see if it actually boots from the drive. Oh, so we did see a splash screen that time. Okay, that's good. And it seems to be loading so far. Let's see if it works. Okay, and here we are, and we're booted into the Nopix graphical interface, the desktop here, and yeah, it is working just fine. It's really great to see the computer up and running like this, and uh, yeah, I mean, just, just exciting to be able to uh, to use this computer again. The fact that it's up and running, it was found in e-waste, definitely exciting to see it booting, and not to mention, didn't take much work from us, it just worked, <laughs> minus some monitor problems. But that's fine. I would say system number one, thumbs up, awesome. Let's move on to system number two. Okay, and here we are with system number two on the bench, and it's an A-open case. It's a very generic, a open case. You can see the open badge down here. That's just decided where they decided to put it. And we have a couple front IO there, but we'll talk about that in a moment. I remember these cases back in the day and I despised them. I, I hated the look of this kind of like rounded bezel. A open made some really nice cases. And in my opinion, this was not one of them, but hey, you know, everybody has their own uh, has their own preference. And this particular case, as you can see, has been sitting in the sun quite a bit. It's quite yellowed. In my opinion, it's not worth saving. This would be one of those systems based on just looks that I probably wouldn't do a lot of restoration for. Plus, I'm biased a bit because I just don't like the case. That's fine. So we have a 52-speed optical drive here from LG. Looks like it's just a standard CD-ROM drive. And then we have a missing 3.5-inch expansion bay here. No doubt where a floppy disk drive would have been. We have power, reset. There's our LEDs for hard disk and our power. And of course, as I mentioned, two USB in the front, and that's it. Some of these cases I've seen with some audio in the front, but in this particular case, we don't have that. Surprise, surprise, we don't have any side panels. <laughs> this is one that did not come with it, but you can see the original color of the case. I mean, overall, in terms of the actual stability of the case and the physical part of the case, it's in good condition. But again, just that plastic bezel being very, very, very yellowed. And on the back, we have our power supply and we have our motherboard IO here again. So we have two of our PS2 ports. We also have what looks like a SPDIF out cable here. I, it's interesting when they make it yellow like this because I've seen them in yellow, I've seen them in orange because it kind of throws me off to be a video cable. And then we have our parallel port and we have our serial port. We have four USB ports, so two in the front, four in the back, we have six. We have a 1394 Firewire connection. We have built-in ethernet. We have three of our audio jacks here as well. And then we have a dedicated video card as well that's in this card because as you can see, we do not have any sort of built-in uh, video on the motherboard. Looks like we have VGA and S-Video out and then we have additional video out there as well. 
Plus we have some ability for expansion for fans. And then here it looks like we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight port RJ11 card. I have no idea what that does, but we're gonna find out as we turn this around. Okay, there's the inside of the system. Let's get this all kind of turned around so we have a much better view of what's going on here. Okay, and here's the inside of our case. So we have a lot going on here in terms of cables, that's for sure. So we have another system here that does not have a hard disk or a floppy disk, as I mentioned earlier. I'm just gonna pull out the extra ribbon cable so it's kind of out of our way. It is nice that it has the Asus type branding on the ribbon cable. So it says, oh, look, it's your CD-ROM cable. <laughs> and the other one said IDE cable, believe it or not. So interesting. Okay, so it is a large motherboard. What do we have here? It looks like a P4P800 revision two motherboard. And it is Asus branded, which is nice. So that's a pretty decent board by the looks of things. It's pretty, uh, pretty large and in charge going on here. Um, so this must have been used in some sort of business environment, specifically with this card. I'm going to take that card out of there just to see what it is. If I can find my Phillips screwdriver here. So we'll just remove it from the system. And this, again, as I mentioned, it's one of those things that when you get systems like this from eWaste, you never know what's going to be in them. So it is a PCI card and it says an Equinix or Equinox, I should say, chipset. I don't know if this is some sort of a modem card. It says Avicent Corporation SST-MM4-8P. I imagine the 8P stands for 8 port. I'm just going to look up there so everybody can kind of see that information there. So yeah, the chipsets here all show Connexent chips right across the board. No doubt they're all controlling those ports individually. Then we have some additional chips here as well. So if anybody is familiar with this, please let me know in the comments because it's interesting to know what these types of cards are. Again, if you know what this card is in the comments, please let me know. I'm really interested uh, to see what this would be used for. Okay, let's continue on here and see what we have. So we have our optical drive in the front here. We have another system that looks like possibly a Pentium 4 or a Core 2 type system. So we're gonna find out as we go. We have our video card here. Just looks like a pretty standard AGP card. I'm gonna pull it out just so we can kind of kind of look and see what is inside. So for the card, it's a Radeon 7000. It says uh, 64 meg DDR video card. So, you know, not, not a bad card for what it is, you know, for, I know for kind of like, if this was used in a business environment, this would have been a perfect card for that. Okay, I'm gonna pop it back in just so we have, make sure that it's in the system. And one thing about the days back then, cable management wasn't always something that everyone thought about. <laughs> All right, let's pop this card back in there. Okay, the video card's back in now. So we have our processor here. Like I said, we have Intel branded again. That's our CPU and our uh, CPU and our fan assembly here. And then we have our chipset. Everything's looking good in terms of the capacitors based on what I'm seeing. I have been looking at that in the other system as well, just to see. We only have one RAM card or RAM stick populated here, one of the slots. So it, but it does look like a couple were populated, but we just have that one. And let's just take it out because it's here. It's just going to be not fun to get out. Maybe that's why they left it in here because of where it's located. Yeah, it's quite quite hard to get with all the wires over it there. It's, not to mention it's, it's quite quite in there. All right, for RAM, we have 512 megs of DDR400 memory. And then down here, we have what looks like two IDE ports as well. And we have our power and we have a floppy connector there, which is great. And we have another, it looks like a third IDE on the side here. That's what it looks like it's kind of like an angle out on the motherboard here. You can see uh, with, see everything's in the way. <laughs> uh, you can see kind of here, the IDE side of it. And then we have our coin cell here. What looks like, I don't know if that's another IDE. Does this have four IDE? We have two for sure, three. It looks like four IDE. <laughs> Talk about expansion. And then we have one, two, three, four, five PCI. So it is, like I said, a P4P800 revision 2A Asus motherboard. So at the very least, the motherboard, if we get this posted, is worth it to me. You know, this chassis, not so much, but uh, love these old motherboards. And look, some of the rubber bands that are just 
in pieces there on the on the board. Okay, and then we have additional cables that go to the front IO as well as the front USB. So, I mean, that's pretty standard stuff. Okay, here we are back on the bench with system number two, all ready to get going. Let's hit the power button and see what happens. Very loud CPU cooler and just flashing power LEDs or sorry, hard disk activity as well as the CD-ROM drive. Nothing. Okay, let's do some troubleshooting on this computer. Let's hold down the power button. Okay, let's move this around and let's just take a look at that power supply. So the first thing we're gonna do is pull out, if everyone can see there, just making sure, because I wasn't set up for this originally. Let's pull out the power supply, power, and take our tester just to make sure that that's functioning. I'm just looking at the voltages on the front here. And the 5 volt, 12 volt, 3.3 volt, everything's looking really good. The minus 12 is fluctuating a bit, but not too badly. So that seems to be pretty good. Uh, let's see. We could try the four pin as well. I know there's look, there was definitely some flashing going on there, so I'm not exactly sure what it was uh, causing a trouble for. Let's pop in the four pin as well as the ATX connector here. Yeah, no, that's looking pretty darn good. Okay, so the power supply looks okay. So what I'm gonna do is, one of the things we troubleshoot, especially with that little light show we got going on there, I am gonna remove that extra card. I know I left it in there and I wanted to leave it in there, but it's possible by me disturbing it, it caused some problems, uh, possibly something else getting hooked up in it. So I'm just gonna remove it just to make sure that's not causing any trouble. So a little bit of wiggle on the PCI. There we are. We'll pull that out. And now oh, it's cold, so that's not too bad. Let's put that aside. I'm just gonna take a look at everything here just to make sure everything's looking good. And it is, I'm not seeing any problems. So I'm gonna pop on the ATX power supply back to the motherboard, the connector. There we are. And we'll do the same thing here with the four pin. So I removed that card, everything else is plugged in, everything else is looking good. Let's see if that made any difference for us. It's doing something differently now. I have post, ha <laughs> ha, look at that. So it looks like that card is causing me some troubles. So I don't know if it was grounding or if it was a problem with the interface. I might have to use some contact cleaner. I mean, it's pretty dirty inside this computer. It's working now, that's what's important. And we'll take a look at everything here. So we are seeing our 512 megabytes of RAM. We are showing that our CD-ROM drive here is set up as secondary system here so that's all good now let's go into setup it's saying that we can't install or can't see any hard disk we understand that and uh our ddr 400 memory okay let's go into our f1 and see what we have okay so let's go down to system information it looks like the date and time is not correct so it looks like we do need a new coin cell battery so it is a pentium 4 running 2.6 gigahertz is what this system is Nothing wrong with Pentium 4s. I like them. I love seeing the variety of them that they have and the various uses that uh, that they used as well. So then again, we only have one and we have our 512 megabytes of RAM. And so, yeah, I mean, it's pretty straightforward here going in here and configuring if you want to configure or manually configure the processor speed and configuration. We have our chipset, devices configuration, all of our different configurations, which is great. Here's our onboard hardware monitor. So we have all of our different uh, different temperatures and speeds and fans and all that stuff. And of course you can see all the voltages there as well. All right, so we do have a fully working system so far. All right, I'm gonna open up the optical drive here and pop in Nopix and see if this system is gonna be able to boot into Nopix. Okay, so we definitely have a problem with the optical drive. Not exactly sure what's going on there. I'm gonna try out a different optical drive right now. Okay, so we have our Aces Quiet Track optical drive here, 523252. I haven't tried this yet. I bought this at a thrift store recently, so <laughs> I just had it handy. Hopefully it powers up and works. So far, so good. Not to mention quite fitting for an Aces motherboard as well to have 
that. I'm just gonna pop into the BIOS real quick just to see if it does detect the um, drive. There's our CDRW as a master drive. I don't know if that's gonna be causing us any difficulty. Let's hit exit and save changes. And I have Nopix in the drive now and see if we're able to boot from it. So it is booting off of the Asus drive that we have now. So let it continue to boot. Oh, I say that, but it automatically rebooted. It's interesting that it picks it up there. Now I had this problem before and it was memory related. I'm gonna try one more optical drive just to see if that is causing us trouble or not. Okay, we're turning into optical drive heaven here. <laughs> so we have a just link, which is an A open drive, a 48 speed burner. So we're just gonna turn on the power, open up the disk drive and see if we're able to boot using this. And I did have this working before, so I do know it does. So make sure the computer detects it. Uh, we're gonna F2 for load setup defaults. That's because of course the coin cell is dead. Let's see if it detects it this time. It did, it's spinning up. No, see as soon as it started to try to boot Linux, it couldn't. So I think the memory could potentially be the problem here. I'm gonna grab another stick of memory just to see it's possibly the memory that this is not liking. Um, it could be a number of things, but that's why we test these type of environments to see if we're able to get that going. Let me see if I can find some memory. Okay, so I took another stick of memory, some DDR400 memory that I had, another 512 megabyte stick actually, and I can't get it working. I tried different slots, I tried using contact cleaner, and unfortunately it will not work. You can see I tried different optical drives, and for whatever reason, it's not loading Nopix. I don't know if that's necessarily an issue with the computer, or there's an issue with just Nopix not liking a piece of hardware that's in here where Windows may not have a problem, I'm not sure. So I've spent quite a bit of time on this now trying to troubleshoot this without actually getting deeper into the system, which I do plan on doing in a future video. I would say that this is kind of like half working. I mean, the system is posting, everything seems to be working fine. We know that the LG drive does not work. It wouldn't read it at all, but it is working on these drives. We did discover that this card had some problems uh, potentially causing this to prevent from booting. Uh, it looked like almost like it was causing a short because we have the LG light and the uh, hard disk light kind of flashing together there. Okay, so I would say that this system is actually posting to a point. I mean, we're able to get this going. I still think this is kind of like, we'll say one and a half systems working so far. All right, let's go on to system number three. And here we are with system number three and definitely one of the cooler looking systems with this kind of mirror reflective type design, fingerprint heaven. <laughs> All right, let's go through this. So it looks like we have, is this another optical drive? No, that's something to do with just the design of the chassis. So we do have an optical drive here. We have an LG Super Multi RW DVD Multi, one of those drives. Looks like it would have been an expansion in this computer at one point. We have, I believe, four or three additional, I guess, five and a quarter bays, but this is kind of like a, just kind of like a dummy kind of front on this that would go in one of those kind of CD-ROM drives in behind. So interesting to see. And we have two blanks here. We do have a 1.44 megabyte floppy disk drive here as well. And we have this interesting kind of design on the front here. I'm not sure what's going to display on the LCD here or not. Uh, if anything. Uh, so we do have power and hard disk LEDs here, power and reset by the looks of things. Some kind of funky design for some cooling here, I guess. Here it says USB on the front. We'll flip that up. And yeah, sure enough, we have two USB, two audio, and looks like a breakout for a 1394 connection, which is not populated. Okay. And the side of the case looks to be in absolute pristine condition. No issues by the looks of things, which is nice. And then on the back, we have our power supply, our missing IO shield by the looks of things, but we have two PS2. Uh, one of our serial ports are back to the town, back to the game. We have our VGA port. We have four USB, so that's six USB as well, built on ethernet plus our three audio. And it's nice to see the built on VGA because we are missing, it looks like it may have had an expansion video at some point, possibly, possibly another network card or a sound card, not sure. Not too concerned about this, but it's always great, obviously, to have the IO shield. 
Okay, let's flip it around here. On this side here, we have additional cooling by the looks of things. This looks factory, so it's pretty nice. We have the fan here, and then we, of course we have a different design, handle, some additional ventilation possibly, but again, in pretty good shape. And I love these thumb screws that are here. I just like to uh, use them instead of using the screwdriver wherever possible, so that's pretty handy. Pop open the case and see what's inside. I think that fan is connected. Yeah, we're just gonna disconnect that because it's on the side. There we are. Okay, we have that removed. All right, so let's get this all turned around and take a much better look at this computer. Okay, let's take a look at the inside here. So it's definitely a beefy case for sure. I mean, you have lots of expansion possibilities with all the different drive kind of cage here with all the optical, the, uh, you know, the floppy, the different drives that could potentially go in here, which is pretty cool. And the motherboard doesn't look to be too bad of a motherboard. It is an ASRock motherboard, G31M-S. It says FSB 1600, DDR2800, and dual channel. So we do have our two RAM slots populated there. Given my history, I'm leaving those in right now, not to disturb them. We'll find out what they are in a moment. Hopefully this system will post. But I am looking at the fan and heatsink situation here with the Intel branded uh, device. But I mean, this is just caked. Look at that. I mean, this is literally caked right up. So we won't be leaving this system on too long, even if we do get it posted, just because I don't want any risk, run any risk of overheating. So we do have our four pin power here, as well as our ATX connector here. Pretty good. We have PCI Express 1 and 16 lanes, which is nice to have on this. And we also have two PCI ports here as well. In addition to the floppy and the IDE, we also have the four ports here for SATA, which is really nice to have because again, it's in that mid kind of area where they were transitioning away from the IDE style ribbon. I mean, even though the system is using it to the SATA, which is nice. And you could see it probably had, uh, you can see with the SATA connector there as well, probably had a hard disk mounted down here at some point. Okay. I mean, this is pretty straightforward board. It's nice looking board. It looks like it's uh, pretty capable. Let's just hope it does post. So let's see if we can get it working. Okay. And here we are with system number three three our finale it's all set up on the bench let's hit the power button and see what happens we have power do we have post is it that is it that easy okay it's complaining about boot device that's fine i'm not worried about that let's hit control delete here hit the delete key maybe we'll get into some sort of bios configuration okay i just hit pause so it says as rock, it says F2 to run setup, F11 for boot menu or tab to switch screen. Let's go F2 for setup. We're in the BIOS, exciting. We're not having any difficulty with our coin cell battery, which is really nice. Time's wrong, but the date is correct. So we have the BIOS version here. Processor type is an Intel Pentium Dual CPU. This is E2140 running at 1.6 gigahertz, uh, two gigs of RAM. Here we go. So with eight megabytes of shared memory and one megabyte of GTT memory. Not sure what that is exactly. Now it is running dual channel here. So we do have the two sticks here and it does show that it is running together in that configuration. So that's pretty, pretty darn awesome. Under advanced, we have our CPU configuration. So we can go and do a bunch of things there. We're not looking to do that right now. We're just looking to see and make sure everything's kind of working. But everybody, I mean, here's our hardware monitor. Our voltages look great. Now, I've had people say to me, and I'm going to get some comments down below, and that's fine. You know, why don't you test the power supplies using the power supply tester before turning these on? Because you could potentially cause damage. You know what? You're absolutely correct. I'm, But I'm getting these systems... They're literally thrown into a pile to be dismantled and recycled. My experience has been pretty good when it comes to this thing, these uh, type of things. I've only ever lost one motherboard, but it was a result of my issue because I crossed the voltages on the motherboard. Again, I've been pretty lucky with this. And you can see here, the voltages are running pretty well. And so under our boot, we do have the configuration. It is detecting the CD-ROM drive, which is great because we're going to use that in a moment. And security and exit. All right. So I am pretty happy with this so far. So we do have a one gigabyte or sorry, two gigabytes of RAM running a Pentium dual 1.6 gigahertz CPU. 
So we're gonna pop in the Nopix CD and see if we're able to get into Nopix. Now, I'm not seeing anything on this front display. I was really hoping that would light up and do something. So I'm not sure if there's something I can do to configure that in behind or there's something to do with uh, the BIOS if I'm able to get that going. I'm not sure. I'm gonna have to like kind of dissect this a little bit to see or look up this case design just to see if there's something I can get that uh, working. So it is detecting everything here. Nopix is booting, which is nice. We'll continue to uh, to boot here. I'm gonna see what it has in terms of graphics. So it is an Intel, just regular built on graphics. So Express Integrated Graphics Controller, similar to an Intel audio controller. So pretty standard stuff in the years of these CPUs and these years of computing is that when you have these motherboards, basically with all these components built on, they would go to Intel, they would go to different chipset manufacturers and say, hey, I need audio, I need video, and they would integrate them into the motherboard. But again, you always had your expansion, so you could use your expansion if you wanted to uh, do more with the computer than what you uh, originally could do with any sort of built on uh, chipset features. Now, that said, this computer does have those two missing uh, breakouts in the back uh, of the chassis itself. So my understanding, or at least my guess, would be that one is directly above the PCI Express slot. So they probably had a dedicated graphics card in there versus using the onboard. And then there's another one missing there, like I said earlier, not sure exactly what it would have contained, possibly a sound card, if that's what they were using it for. I mean, specifically getting kind of cool design case like this. So the system is still booting into Nopix. So we're gonna go right to the desktop. And here we are with system number three, booting directly into the Nopix 9.1 uh, desktop, and it's working. Everything seems to be pretty stable and click around no problem. Everything's pretty quick. And uh, yeah, I'm very impressed with this software so far and these computers. Yeah, I would say, you know, it's pretty successful having system number three, our finale, up and running fully. All right, so we're going to get the bench all cleaned up and do our outro. And here we are at the end, and what a journey it was to get here, I tell you, between the three systems. I wasn't sure at all if we were going to get these systems up and running, and we were able to get all three posting. I would say two and a half are working because we weren't able to get Nopix running on the middle system, but I think there's more we could tweak to get that going. But again, you know, system number one, we were able to get up and running. We had that initial video card problem that we could see at the very beginning where it would kind of flash on, flash off, and eventually it just seemed to correct itself. I don't know if it was my monitor or if it was the VGA output or that video card, not sure, but I would definitely do some more testing if we were gonna restore this computer with that ATI card that we have inside that system. System number two, not sure it was ever used for. I kind of feel like it's the ugly duckling of the three. <laughs> I, I never liked this case. I said that at the beginning, never liked it. But hey, the chassis itself is a very solid design. The system itself worked fine. We have that beautiful Asus motherboard that's in there. And whatever this card is, I have no idea what this card is. So again, looking forward to hearing from everybody in the comments what that would have been used for. And we were able to get the system up and running. Wasn't able to post in Anopics, but again, that could be due to many different issues, which we'd have to troubleshoot in a future video if we do a restoration. And behind door number three, system number three, Posted immediately, worked directly, ran right into Nopix, no problem. We have that beautiful ASRock motherboard that's in there. Uh, you know, nothing fancy in terms of a video card, sound card, things like that, because again, we don't have any of those in there. It looks like they were in there at one point, but it, it's nice to have this hardware. We have great motherboards, the MSI motherboard and two Asus type motherboards that are here, one being Asus and one being ASRock, but great having these systems in the collection and really looking forward to restoring these systems or again, I don't know what I'm doing with the middle system yet. I, every time I look at it, I just don't know why it's here. <laughs> anyway, all right, I'm really enjoying doing this for everybody. I hope you really enjoy it too. If you do, please give the video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. It makes a huge difference, helps the channel grow, helps tell the YouTube algorithm you guys are liking what you're seeing. Hit the notification button, change it to all, you'll be notified of new content such as this. Please leave a comment down below. Did you ever own any of the components in these systems, the custom systems? Tell me your stories about the days when you used to build these custom computers. I love hearing all the stories. I love the interaction on the channel and I respond to every one of your comments. Thank you so much for watching. Always making new content. We'll see you 
in the next video. Bye-bye.